Last month, Steam had a fighting games fest. And in that games fest, Mortal Kombat 1 had been on a sale for 60% off. So I thought, let's buy Mortal Kombat 1. As a young boy, I played Mortal Kombat, Mortal Kombat 2, Mortal Kombat 3. Probably before the ESRB was around, but oh well. Um, I left Mortal Kombat around MK4, but returned with Mortal Kombat 9 and played the story of Mortal Kombat 10 and 11. So I thought, let's have fun with Mortal Kombat. Now in this video, we'll have a look at the graphic settings of the game and see what they do graphically, because performance-wise I can't really tell that much because the game is locked at 60 FPS and so I can't really see if anything has better or worse performance. Now still I try to get some optimized settings in this video. So join me in a look at Mortal Kombat 1. Welcome to Angus Gaming, guess who I am? Kano. No. And let's go to the Nether Realm. No, the Netherlands. That's a bad joke. Nether Realm isn't even present in Mortal Kombat 1, but I always think that the Netherlands, which is where I'm from, sounds a bit like a Mortal Kombat stage. I think the beat em up I still like to play most is Dead or Alive, but since I'm not expecting a new Dead or Alive ever again, I maybe should start looking for a new favorite beat em up series. However, because I mostly play Dead or Alive as a beat em up, Dead or Alive 6 being quite old in the meantime, I think Mortal Kombat 1 looks gorgeous. But then you know what my point of reference is. Anyways, Mortal Kombat 1 doesn't just look great, it runs great as well, I think. On my system, at, at what I would say are the highest settings, I get a 60 FPS during the fights. Only some drops during fatalities or fatal blows. However, let's look at some gameplay of my optimized settings. And I think the game still looks great. It does pare down a few graphical settings which you can see, but being busy in fights I don't think you will really notice. Now even the optimized settings still have some FPS drops, out of the normal fights luckily, but I'm not entirely sure why. Is the game just loading in data? I don't really think it's shader compilation stutter or anything, because it happens every time. Well, since it's not in fights, you don't notice it that much and I don't find it that bothersome. Now I know latency always is a big thing in fighting games and unfortunately I don't have any visual proof of my latency. But having the Nvidia render latency on screen, that was between 11 and 15 milliseconds most of the time. I found that my optimized settings had no effect on the render latency, but what did help if you want to improve that latency was running the game in a lower resolution. Running in Full HD, 1920 by 1080 render latency was between 8 and 12 milliseconds, I believe. Well, just in case you are a more professional player than I am, hopefully that is nice info to have. But let's dive into those settings. And when you go to the graphic settings, you'll notice there is an auto config option. So well, there you have your personalized optimized settings, I guess. If game studios keep making these great tools, you won't need Henkes Gaming anymore. Bye bye YouTube career, it was fun while it lasted. Well, I would actually recommend you running that. However, if you want to tweak things manually, be sure to keep watching. The other config runs for a bit, showing you how Scorpion obliterates Sub-Zero. And after some time, you'll have your settings set for you. Above the other config, however, is the benchmark option. And I think it's very nice of NetherRealm Studios to include such an option as well. I think it's a nice slice of gameplay where your FPS is measured so you can test your settings performance-wise. But well, let's go over these what I would call optimized settings. And as stated before, I only had a look at the graphical impact of these settings because I didn't really know how to measure the FPS increase with the game running at 60 FPS at all time. And this FPS limit cannot be removed because of gameplay purpose. Someone with a higher FPS would benefit of faster reaction times. If they are young and fresh humans, that is. Not old like me. I have increased latency built into me. Anyways, with that said, the settings. I am playing at 4K, but if low latency is really important to you, try turning down the resolution to Full HD. You can't choose full screen, so you have to turn your Windows resolution down. But have a look at a tool like NIR Command C, so you don't have to switch your resolution yourself every time. I'll link it down below in the comments. After that, I will turn on VSync, set the graphics preset to high, and we'll go from there. Leave FPS limit at 60, 
upscaling method, I would say use DLSS performance. In the experimental section, if the game didn't have an update in the meantime, I recorded this about a month ago during the season of Reptile. Turn the 60fps mode on, I found the switch from 60fps to 30fps every time a bit jarring, so I want 60fps at all time. And then we move over to the advanced section, so press that show advanced button of yours. And there we set texture quality to ultra high. And so filtering, set it to 4 times. It may slightly improve your performance. Note by the way that each setting tells you if it will improve or just slightly improve your performance. Shadow quality, leave this at high. Bloom, leave it on. Motion blur, I would say leave it on as well. I always like motion blur, just make things look a tad more realistic. Ambient occlusion, turn this off. Reflections, we'll leave on. And chromatic aberration, you can't turn this on. Not while DLSS is enabled anyways. If you disable DLSS, you can turn this on, but they have no clue where you see this effect in game. AA mode and the aliasing mode can't be set since we enabled DLSS. Now stay tuned to have a look at those settings and see why I chose some of those settings. But I wanted to ask you real quick to like this video and why not subscribe? The button is not that far apart. Well, thanks for that. And now, quickly to the settings, we have some fatalities waiting on us. Fatalities waiting on us, by the way, that sounds bad, but oh well. Fatality. Texture quality is the first one. Now I've placed the different settings side by side and placed my performance indicator thingy from MSI Afterburner at the top of the screen in this video every time. Usually I place it down below, but I found it got in the way of things we should have a look at too often. Well, anyways, just so you know, in case you were wondering. But yeah, looking at the texture quality, I would say if you have at least 8GB of VRAM, leave the textures at ultra high. If you have less VRAM, then you should probably start lowering this setting. Now even at 4K, even at the low texture quality setting, you still seem to need 6.2GB, so perhaps you need to lower your resolution a bit as well. Anyways, at the low graphics point you certainly see textures are less sharp. With each step sharpness improves a bit, but at very high and at ultra high, I don't really see the differences between those. But it will probably also not matter in performance, so ultra high it is. An isotropic filtering then, and we see the difference best at the stones between the grass that is most close by. Again here, with each step you increase the quality, the stones get just a bit sharper and have a bit more detail. But also again, when you are fighting you will not really notice this. I chose 4 times because I think it's a nice middle ground, looking not too blurry but hopefully giving you a small performance win over the 16 times. Now I maybe should have tested this setting in the invasions mode as well, because maybe you'll see it best there. But I only think of this now, when recording, sorry, you'll have to check for it yourself. I am curious though if this setting even has a performance win to it, let me know in the comments. And then we take a look at shadow quality. Now we can clearly see the shadow on the shield, and there we see that low and medium settings are really lacking in the shadow detail. And on low in the background you can see if the cheering lady is not jumping in front of our view, that the bowl with the wood of, for a fire in it has not that much of a shadow as well. So I would say stick with at least high. Also, notice that the VRAM usage seems to differ from shadow levels next to each other. So that might be a reason to go lower than high. Anyways, let's look at high and ultra high next to each other. This way we can create a little bit more room for each setting to compare. But still, I don't think I see a difference in these settings levels. On ultra high, but on high as well, the shadow on the shield looks very nice. It is a very tiny bit of shimmer I would say, but on both settings levels. And the character shadows look great on both as well. I don't think high is less sharp or anything. The docks in the distance have a shadow on the ultra high setting, but again on the high setting as well. So therefore, for the optimized settings, shadow quality will be set to high. In Bloom... Sorry, random Nirvana reference, but leave Bloom on I would say. Although in the settings menu it did say it could improve performance, and they didn't say slightly improve, but improve. 
Still, however, I had to look quite a bit to find a decent example of Bloom, so I'm under the impression that it's not used that much in the game. And therefore, I left it on, as I think it looks good and I can't really imagine that this would have a great impact on performance. On the other hand, if you do notice it impacts performance, turn it off. You won't have that much you will miss, since I think it's not used that much. Well, choose wisely. The motion blur. And this goes so quick. Let's look at it in slow motion. And in slow motion it still moves quickly, but I like the little blur the characters have when moving. Just makes them look a little bit more in motion and makes it look a little bit more realistic, I think. Again, at full speed, you almost can't make the difference out, but I think you're very focused on these characters in the game. So every bit they look and move better is something we would like to keep. So keeping the motion blur on. Ambient occlusion then. I saw no real difference in graphical detail with AO turned on versus it being turned off. Shadows of the statues are the same. Points where the shadows are placed on the ground look the same. Nothing of difference in shadow between the cobblestones the characters are standing on. And even if we move the viewpoint to the side a bit, I see no differences on where the character's foot stands on the ground or anything. So for normal fights, I would say we can easily turn ambient occlusion off. And often, even if you don't see the effect in the game, it has an effect on FPS. Now often I think you do see the effect of ambient occlusion in games, and turning it off can make objects look a bit floaty or something. But not in a normal Mortal Kombat 1 stage, I would say. In Invasions mode, however, you do see the effect of ambient occlusion. If we look at the tower, the windows in the middle of each tower stage have a bit more shadow when ambient occlusion is turned on. And I think this looks a bit more realistic, as the shadows are further back and would naturally catch less light. Also, where the tower is touching the ground, and also where these pillars in front of the tower on the right are touching the ground, you see they are better shaded and therefore more grounded with ambient occlusion on. For the optimized settings, however, I would say turn ambient occlusion off, as even with the setting off, I don't think the invasion stage looks bad or anything. It's true that ambient occlusion on looks better, but the performance win you will probably have by turning ambient occlusion off could very well be worth it. And in normal stages you don't see a difference, I think. Also, you're too busy making those 10 hit combos, so you don't notice small changes in shadows. So I would say, turn ambient occlusion off. And then let's move on to reflections. And we see a nice reflection here in the Great Hall. And just as Bloom, I think reflections aren't used that much in Mortal Kombat 1. And for that reason, I would say, leave them on. Also, the settings menu mentioned that this could only slightly improve performance, turning the reflections on, of course. So only slightly. So leaving these on will probably not matter that much. If you do need more FPS on stages where there are reflections, you can turn them off, of course. In this stage, I don't think you really miss out on anything. The floor with reflections looks like a nicely polished marble, but the floor without them looks like a nicely unpolished marble. It still looks good, only not polished. And there aren't many stages where you are battling in pools of water that need to reflect everything around it. So, anyways, I'll leave it on for the optimized settings. And then that chromatic aberration, which you can't turn on if you use DLSS. I thought you could see the effect perhaps in the fatal blow of Johnny Cage, where the camera lens get broken and you see light refractions. But apparently light refractions are not chromatic aberration. So then I don't know, but anyways, since we use the LSS, you can't enable chromatic aberration anyways. So who cares about the chromatic aberrations? And then we move over to particle density. And I like particles. I like lots of particles. So I'm having a bit of a hard time telling you to turn down this setting. But we are going for the optimized settings, right? And sometimes you need to hand in something good looking in order to have a better performance. Now, if we put all the particle density settings side by side and have a look in slow motion, I think we can quite clearly see that each setting level you go up or down, you gain or lose particle effects. But with the particle density, I think the high level is a nice mix where you get a decent amount of particles and still have moves that look great and spectacular, while handing in a little bit of particles to win a bit of performance. Although I don't know how much performance win you'll get, but oh well. 
Now if we look at high and ultra high again next to each other, I think we clearly see we do lose some of the effect, but the idea and the feeling of doing a special move is still present with the high amount of particles. Now let's move on and have a quick look at the final setting I want to show, the 60 FPS mode. Now the 60 FPS mode is not really used in fights themselves of course, because these are 60 FPS. It is used around those fights, so the only time you might want to disable the 60 FPS mode is in the story mode. At the end of the story mode you get to choose a character and the cutscenes with that character are not pre-rendered like the rest of the cutscenes are. Since all other story or demos in the game are locked at 30 FPS, you might find it a bit off-putting that you get a movie at 30 FPS and then a story movie with your character that is not 30 FPS and suddenly 60 FPS. However, in all other cases, I found the 60 FPS mode way better and nicer to play than the 30 FPS mode. When you're playing battles at 60 FPS, then suddenly switching back to 30 FPS feels weird and it feels a bit janky. I sometimes play games at 30 FPS, but then when you play the game at 60 FPS and you start playing a game in 30 FPS, it takes a little time to get used to that 30 and then after a while that 30 is fine. But in Mortal Kombat you're doing fights at 60 FPS, so you don't want to switch back to that 30 FPS when you're walking around in invasions or something like that. So I would set the 60 FPS mode to on. And there you have it, the game running with the optimized settings. Now as is actually always the case, if your computer is up for the task, feel free to increase the graphics settings of course. I would start by increasing the particle density as I think those make fights look even more spectacular. And then next if your computer can still handle it, enable the ambient occlusion, certainly if you play a lot of invasions mode. And keep in mind that changing these settings didn't have much of an effect to the render latency, so perhaps you want to keep the game running at max settings but just with a lower resolution. I played the game in Full HD with DLSS set to quality for example and it still looks rather good I would say. Anyways, that's it for this month. Next month I think I will have a look at Flintlock, The Siege of Dawn. For some reason I thought Frostpunk 2 was going to be released the 25th of July, but it's releasing the 20th September. I liked the first Frostpunk so I thought let's have a look at the second one. But well, Flintlock it probably is. Well that is it for now however, maybe no flawless victory but at least I didn't got a fatality on me. Now thank you for making it all the way to the end of this video, please consider subscribing, um, it will make Henkes Gaming even better and maybe at some point I don't have to look at games who are from September last year, but I can have a look at the latest and greatest because I could get some review codes. Anyways. I really enjoyed my time with Mortal Kombat 1, but probably I will soon start on Stellar Blade on my PS5. Now that doesn't mean that Hank will not be gaming on PC anymore. No, join me again next month with a look at Flintlock. And if you liked this video and you want to have a look at more beat'em up stuff, have a look at my Tekken 8 video, the demo, but still. Otherwise, I hope to see you again next month. Aru. Fight! Yeah!